Welcome back to Mastering Next.js. In this module, we're going to talk about building a blog with MDX. So first off, I want to talk about what MDX is and compare it against a CMS, a content management system, which is something you may or may not have already heard about. So MDX is Markdown for the Component Era. Now, what this means is You've probably seen the Markdown format that allows you to um, easily style your text content. If you've ever used GitHub, that's how you can um, write content on there and insert bold, italic, images, all sorts of things like that. MDX allows you to integrate components inside of your Markdown. So if you look at this example here, you're rendering a heading, some text, some bold text, and even a fully custom component. Now the best part about MDX is that you have complete control over everything and it really pairs well with something like React which is component based. So using MDX you can really easily start a blog and manage the full life cycle of those posts whether that's the content, the images, or even inserting you know, custom graphs and diagrams directly into that content. That's MDX. That's what we're going to be working with today. Now, how does that compare against a CMS? Well, the most popular CMS is definitely WordPress. Like it says, it powers 35% of the internet, which is just insane. So many sites out there are depending on WordPress. And part of the reason is because it makes the setup process um, easier than a lot of the other solutions that used to exist. And it bundled the UI for managing the content along with the data, the SQL database. Now, this approach has its pros and cons. Now in 2020 and looking into the future, we're seeing more people transition to headless CMSs. Now, what a headless CMS means is rather than including that interface for managing the content along with your application. So if you've ever used WordPress, it's like that WordPress admin. Instead of doing that, you're going to provide an API to access your content. And then the interface for managing that content is its own separate thing. So it might be its own site or you might host it yourself somewhere else. But regardless, it's decoupled. And the way you interact with that information is via APIs. Now, why would I choose a CMS over MDX? Well, in my opinion, some of the biggest ones are who is contributing to your site. If it's only developers, developers love Markdown. So that format might be better for them. But if you have other people like non-developers contributing content to your site, uh, people doing marketing, you know, writing that prose so that other people can read it and you can put content out on your site, uh, you might want to consider a CMS because it ha it adds that GUI layer on top of the content. Another thing is the handling of assets. So when you're using MDX, uh, a lot of the time what people do is they bundle their assets along with the repository. So for example, in the blog that we're going to be creating, we're also going to have our assets you know, hosted alongside our blog. So we're the ones managing that. Now what that means is that you have to manage things like uh, image sizing, compression, optimization. Yes, there are plugins and ways to do this a little bit better, but at the end of the day, you're still the one in charge of that. Now with some CMSs, um, a lot of this is already baked in when you upload images to their platform, they'll take care of you know scaling, resizing, compressing, all of that stuff. So based on that, you know it really depends on your use case. And I think that this tweet is actually a really good take on the differences between CMSs and some of these new players, two of which I'm gonna talk about uh, here in a second. And you know, as developers, we just want an easy endpoint to access this content, but you know, designers and managers, the content is still king, and that's why WordPress is, is still so popular. But what we're seeing is that there's just a ton of these new tools coming out that blend all of these different approaches um, specifically like static generated sites with Next.js, which we're going to talk about. Um, and it makes it, one, there's a lot more options to choose from, but two, they're all getting better because they're learning from each other. So I'm really excited about the future of, of managing content 
on the internet and, and the platforms that we use to do that. So two of the headless CMS solutions that I wanna talk about are Contentful and Sanity. And the reason I've chosen these two over maybe some of the other ones is I've worked with them a little in the past and I've enjoyed the experience, at least from a developer's side of you know managing this content and working with their APIs and their interface. So if you're interested in using a CMS, specifically a headless CMS and trying to try it out with Next.js, I'd recommend giving these two um, a try, check them out. And really, I'm not gonna go in depth on how you would actually hook one of these up because uh, there are some example applications out there for this, but one thing I wanna show is that because it's just an API to manage the content, on their website or on their editor, you're going to manage all of that. And then inside of your application, it's just using, you know, get initial props like we've talked about fetching data in the, the last modules um, to allow you to then access that content via an API request and display it on your page. So it's really the same concept. It's just putting the content in a different location. Now, we're not going to talk about that specifically. Instead, we're going to focus on MDX. Now, I think it's helpful to show an example of what a finished blog with MDX might look like to get you an understanding of what you know your application could be. And the Mastering Next.js website is actually built using Next.js, obviously, and MDX. And here you'll see at the slash blog um, endpoint, I have a list of these two blog posts that I have on my site, uh, both wrote with MDX. And when I click on one of these articles, you'll see that I can load images, I can do links, I can do you know lists, I can do code blocks, basically anything I want, plus the ability to then inject completely separate React components like this marketing blurb down here at the bottom for the course. You know, this isn't part of my markup for this post, but I can I have full customization for how I want to display this text. Now, if we look over here on the right, I actually have this post pulled up and you'll see it's just like writing Markdown on GitHub or anywhere else with the added ability then of being able to include components wherever you want. So for example, at the top, I'm importing this date component and it's doing some date formatting here to display that date, which is processed from this meta information at the top of the file. We also export the contents of this uh, post as a post component, and that's going to provide all of the different styling and wrapping and you know passing the components for how to render things. Now, this is a little bit more complicated of an example, so we're going to start with something a lot more simple. Now, to do that, I've spun up a new folder containing a new Next.js application, and all it has is a package JSON that defines the dependencies here for MDX, the plugin for Next to use MDX and then Next in React. So we have this package. I've installed the dependencies already. Um, to configure our application to understand MDX, we need to override the Next config and use that plugin. So let's say um, with MDX, which is that plugin, let's require that and then say, uh, we're gonna export this with MDX. Now we need to pass some configuration options into this plugin, and one of those is page extensions, which tells the plugin which file extensions to look for. So we want JS and we want MDX. Okay, so now our application is configured to understand MDX, and now we need an entry point into the application so that we could view those files. So let's make a new folder pages and then a new file inside of here, index.mdx. This is gonna be the entry point into the application. So we'll say mastering next.js, hello world. Save this and run it locally. And we can see the new MDX page that we created over here on the left with the heading and the text. Now, obviously this isn't styled, we're not passing any custom components here, 
but you can get the idea if I were to just you know copy paste the content of one of these articles put it in here and obviously there's no images but you can see it, it makes it really easy to get going to do forms and you know lists and headings bold italic pretty much everything you can just do markdown and then inject more functionality via react as you see fit now you might be wondering okay how do i manage all of the different posts that i'm going to create um, thanks to next file based routing um, index is going to map to this and if i had another folder under here nested at blog slash whatever or whatever slug i want to use for example i have two blog posts down here learn next.js and then a comparison between next gatsby and create react app and these files are then just automatically um, turned into those routes that's how the file system surfaces those but then if you want to have a blog page that shows all the different articles that you had. Um, the way that I like to do it is by maintaining a list locally and then just mapping over all of the different items in that JSON object. So we have articles here that I keep in a data folder. And basically it's just the date, the slug that we wanna use, and then the title. And I iterate over these to then show the different blogs that are available, which is what you saw uh, at slash blog. So this is pretty cool. Let's look at adding some more functionality to our blog. A pretty common requirement of blogs is you want to capture leads for a newsletter or some kind of email sign up. And to do that, you need to create a form to capture that information. Uh, an example of what this might look like is Right here on my blog, I have a form at the bottom that allows them to put in their email address and then click subscribe. Now when they click subscribe, this is actually talking to an API route like we talked about in a previous module, um, which is then talking to the, the MailChimp API. Now this is one way to do it. Uh, it's not terribly difficult, but it does require um, hosting that serverless function and you know, what if there was an even easier approach that allowed you to not have to manage any backend code here? And that's what we're going to work with today as we build a form for our blog. And the solution we're going to talk about is called Static Kit. And I really love their headline here why write backend code if you don't have to? And I think that they do a great job of simplifying the developer experience for capturing this information on your website, specifically for things like forms. Plus, as a pro, this site is also using Next, and it's got a great design. So we're going to mimic what they're showing here to use Static Kit to capture leads on a form that we create. And along with that, we're also going to use a component library in the process to make this a little bit easier. Now, I've talked about Chakra, uh, and how it uses styled system under the hood. Uh, we're gonna be building a, a more of an application with Chakra in the next module. And another similar component library that's based off style system is called ThemeUI. And just to throw another example in here, we're going to use ThemeUI um, to style our blog and then to build out this form. So first things first, let's go back to the article we created. We'll get rid of all of this stuff and just say, this is my blog. Uh, save this. Go back to localhost and see that it renders here. Okay, so now we want to make a new component for our form. So let's make a new folder inside of here, components. And let's make form.js. Now this is going to contain the form and we're going to inject this as a React component into our MDX. So to do that, we're going to use some components from theme UI. So if we go to their documentation, components, uh, we're going to need to use a field for getting uh, an email and a name, and then also uh, a button so that you can click on something. So let's, let's look at field. Um, we're gonna need this, and let's say form. And eventually we're going to need to do 
logic to talk with static kit in here, but for now, let's just return out. Um, we're gonna need two different fields. Let's do field. Um, the default on this, we can actually just take this from here. Uh, we can have an email, we can have a, let's do just name or even better, first name. And my linter is saying you need to sort these props alphabetically. Okay, save that, yay for auto formatting. And then export this form. Now it's saying, do you have it installed theme UI? Which is very true, I haven't done that. So let's do that. I think there's a couple different packages that I need to install. Theme UI, Emotion for styling, and then MVX. So let's go here and add those packages. Now part of the setup for Theme UI is a theme object that's going to include information about colors, topography, layouts, etc. So let's take this example theme and we'll make a new file just inside of our folder, theme.js. Uh, there's some lint warnings about sorting, but we're going to just leave that for now. And then it's saying, okay, to add the theme to your application, you need to wrap the page in a theme provider such that it has access to all the different things that uh, will populate your theme. Now there's actually an example using Next.js that shows how you override the app so that you have um, so that you have it show up as kind of a layout. Let's see if I can find that. I think oh yeah, it was on their GitHub. So we have examples, next, uh, pages, app. So here's an example of providing that theme provider in the app. We're not gonna do anything with color mode and then making um, styled from emotion available. So we can take this, make our own underscore app and get rid of some of the stuff that we don't need here. Uh, we don't need the header, we don't need the color mode and um, our theme is going to be not under source. Let's format that. Okay, so we have we override the app, we have the component, we wrap it with a theme provider, we make styles available, and then we render the component. So our MDX file is going to first be wrapped by this, which makes it available. So now if we go back to here, let's run this locally again. And we can close out of that, go back over to here. Okay, so now we're running locally again. Um, let's go back to our form. And uh, we have just a basic component created here. Let's actually get this in our MDX file. So it's under components form JS. So let's import that, import form from uh, components and it's form. And then let's just say we were gonna have this at the bottom. Okay. Can't resolve theme UI, oh, I forgot to install the components. Let's do that too. So we set up theme UI, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you get the components for free. And the reason they did that is to decouple it because you can use theme UI without the components if you would like. But the nice thing about the component package is that it gives you some, um, essentially makes it easier to scaffold these um, libraries using theme UI. So now that the components are available, we've imported the form, we should be able to then see it on the page. Awesome, okay, so we have our form. It has an email, it has a first name. Let's also get a button in here. And uh, we can just say submit. And the final piece would be a heading component. 
So we'll say, mm, how about subscribe to my newsletter? Now we need to import these components. Okay. Subscribe to my newsletter, two fields, and then a button. Now, the way that you can access styled system props as shorthand properties on the components is the same with theme UI. So rather than having to create a completely separate component to do something like adding uh, padding or margin, uh, one of the really nice things is that you can just do, let's say margin bottom of four and put that on the field and that's going to create spacing which makes it really, really fast to build UIs quickly and get those values right. Now four seems like a little much. Let's maybe do two. Yeah, that's, that's a little better. Maybe three here. Okay, so we have our form. Let's actually hook this up with static kit and see uh, the full process of capturing a lead. So if we go back to static kit, um, it looks like step one is going to configure and deploy your plugins. So let's do that. We're going to install the CLI. And I've already went ahead and made an account just for testing. So let's do that. We've got the CLI installed. Let's, uh, let's do a newsletter instead of contact form okay newsletter added and then uh, we need to actually pass it the key here so let's do that okay so we have a deployment of our newsletter that's step one you can see it here cool no submissions yet okay now we need to install the client library so let's go back to our application, install static kit react. Okay, now let's use it in this component. We can basically just pull things from here. So we're going to need use form. Let's change this to a function. And pull this out. And then wrap our fields with a form. Okay. This is saying prefer using arrow functions over traditional functions, but honestly, we can ignore this or just remove it because we need this function so that we can. Uh, access react hooks. So we have a form. We're going to use that form and say it's newsletter, the site. We're going to need to update this. Let's, uh, let's sort these to make it happy. If it succeeded, we're not going to render this at all. We're just going to say thank you for signing up. We could even use uh, a heading here. And then we have our heading, we have our form. On submit, we're going to submit using the use form hook. And then we need to add names, which we have here, name of email, um, name of first name if we wanted to do that. Right now, let's we're just gonna do email based on this example. And then the button needs to be a type of submit. Okay, let's say it's also, well, let's put this prop first disabled when it's a state submitting. Now the last thing that we need to do here is to wrap our application with the static kit provider. So then rather than provide the site ID right here, I believe we need to do it at the app level. So I'm gonna pull up their docs. Uh, let's see, React. Yeah, there's a static kit provider that wraps the entire application. Uh, we can just do that here. Oops. Take that, put it here. 
Let's do model formatting. And now I need my site ID. So we can just take that from the URL, I believe. Okay. Now our application is wrapped and static kit is available. Go back to the form. I'm not sure if I need to explicitly include this here or not, but we'll go with that for now. Okay, let's run this locally, let's see if it works. Okay, it's running locally. Pull up the console, uh, we'll say email, submit 404, not found. What did we do wrong? It didn't come through here. Okay. Let's uh, let's go back to the docs. Use form form key. They weren't even putting in the site ID here. Let's try that. That's our form key. We've already set it up with the site, so it knows about the site. This is saying. Oh, version 1.02. I wonder if their docs are out of date. This has this. Ah, 2.0. And what did we install? Whoops, what did we install? Static kit 2.0. Ah, this must have just been released. Okay, good to know. So we wrapped the application, we put the form key here. Looks like it's actually handle submit now. And state succeeded. Everything else appears to be the same. Huh, okay, 2.0, that'll get you. Let's refresh here. Same email. Thank you for signing up, awesome. Just had to know which version I was using. <laughs> so I refresh the page, boom. And you'll see it actually automatically picked up the name field because I defined it as one of the properties that was available. So if I go back here, uh, I think I can actually just do this, make this bogus, and then first name. And it should capture that with name. Awesome, perfect. Okay, so now we have a form where we can capture leads. Um, you can really do whatever you want here. You have the full uh, customization of passing in whatever information you want to capture from the client. And then now you can manage all of those leads inside of Static Kit. So this really simplifies that experience. It prevents you from having to set up any of that backend code. And uh, I've been really happy using this for some of my other projects. I would definitely recommend it. Okay, so I think this wraps up the simple example for how you could set up a blog, manage your post, and then integrate custom components like a form to capture leads and talk with some, some kind of API like Static Kit to save off that information. Uh, I want to swing back and talk about the completed example of a full MDX blog with custom components that actually powers the Mastery Next.js website that I'm going to include as open source code as part of this course. So what you're looking at here is one of those posts. Um, let's actually look at what the code looks like to do this. So as you'll see, I have this file here that's the next Gatsby Create React app. And I mentioned before that there was this post file. Let's dive into what that actually looks like. So we define a mapping between a component in Markdown and then a custom React component for how we want to render things. So for this blog, I've actually created all these components myself, and these are just styled components that I'm using here to um, change the markup. But you could actually just plop in any component libraries, already pre-built components here if you wanted to. Uh, you have the full customization to provide whatever components you want um, to show how to render things. Now you can achieve a similar effect to this uh, with theme UI um, by changing the object of the theme object. So let me see if I can find an example here. I 
I know there's a way. I think it's, yeah, here we go, styling MDX. So rather than saying, okay, H1 here, you could actually just provide styles inside of here and that's the same thing. So there's a couple different ways you wanna do it. For me, the way I had this one set up, um, I just completely did it myself. Uh, it might be easier for somebody just getting off the ground to provide their styles like this. I've been really impressed with the MUI. So we have our components. Uh, I'm saying that I want to restrict it to a specific width, this main area, and then I use this MDX provider. Now this provider is going to take in that object of components and it knows that now when I'm um, parsing this file and I'm looking for you know a link or I'm looking for a strong tag or you know an unordered list, when I'm using all these things, it now has the components available to map them to when it's rendering it out on the page. So the MDX provider makes those things available. And then still in this page React component, which again, it's all about composition. So you can do components inside of components here and see them be rendered. You see, here's where that course block is, which is the custom marketing blurb down here at the bottom. Now this page component, I'm actually using for all of the different pages, not only just the MDX page. And the reason is because it handles doing some of the uh, OG tags for me inside of here, which I showed in one of the previous modules. And, and this is really nice and just simplifies it and abstracts it up a layer. So long story short, you can completely customize how you want your blog to look, what components you wanna use, plus having the complete customization of every single component and every single piece of your MDX post. So with that, that's the end of this module. Uh, we've talked about MDX, we've talked about CMS and their differences. We've set up a really simple example, talked about how you can turn that into something that's even more complex, how you can manage those posts, and then the big benefit of MDX, which is using those custom React components inside of your post, building a form, using something like static kit, and using theme UI components, all of that good stuff, all inside of this episode. So uh, thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for the next module. Cheers.